Hello, I'm Dave from Dino PC, and today we're going to be teaching you how to put on a air cooler. In this case, from Cooler Master. So this is once again the how-to series. You guys know exactly how it works by now. Basically, we take you through how to install various things in your PC. If you click here, you'll be able to see what we did last time where we actually installed a Intel CPU. And also if you click here, then you can see us installing a stock Intel fan. But this time we're going to be installing a quite a complicated Cooler Master air cooler. But it's a good one. Let me hand you over to Nicola to show you how to do it. Now we're going to move to a slightly more complicated cooler. Um, this is the one from Cooler Master. We picked this one because it's particularly uh, complicated to install. It's also very efficient, so it's a good choice for you if you want to keep your computer cooled down properly. This is a huge cooler. It's very big. It's not particularly heavy, which is good. When you decide to go for this type of cooler, it's because probably you are planning to overclock your computer and you have a high-end CPU that you want to keep cooled down. These coolers are very efficient. Sometimes they are more silent than liquid cooling. They may perform slightly worse, but still is a very, very, very solid option to go for. First of all, let's work on the cooler. There are some clips here. I, I always like to remove the fan so we can install it later and work with just the dissipator. There is no thermal paste installed here. There is actually a plastic protection. So let's remove the protection. I once, uh, so that's a very common mistake. People forget to remove the plastic, which is then gonna go very hot, melt and make a mess. You're gonna put your computer in, in the hospital and you don't want that to happen. As you can see, there are no clips on this cooler. So how are we gonna anchor it to the motherboard? This uh, uh, specific cooler is compatible for AMD and Intel also. For today, we're gonna show you how to install the Intel backplate. It was in the box with the cooler. So we need to turn the motherboard around because we need to work at the back of the motherboard. It's basically the first time I installed this cooler myself. I can see it's very complicated. I wanna show you there are lots of screws. So very easy, I'm gonna just grab the manual. Don't be ashamed, manual are cool. They're gonna tell you everything you need to know. We're gonna identify our socket. Our socket is an LGA1151. The beautiful thing about the motherboard is that they may look very complicated in their layout, but everything has a label. So it's really, really hard to make mistakes. And plus you can refer on to the manual motherboard all the time. So LGA1151, we're gonna look for, for the uh, same. Oh, so let's grab the manual and the other way around. So now we know that our socket is an LGA1151. Okay, to install this fan on this specific socket, the manual is telling us that we need to place the screw in the central loop of the backplate. Let's grab the backplate, turn the motherboard. So, again, it's like playing Lego, matching holes. We got one, two, three. Same on the backplate of the motherboard, one, two, and three. So what we wanna do is match the holes this way. Then we're gonna grab the first screws. So these are the first, these are the first screw we are going to use to uh, hook the uh, backplate to the motherboard. So we will need the four screws and four bolts. Grab one of these, put it in the loop, and use the central loop to install the backplate. So you may need to screw it a bit. Don't screw it all the way to the bottom yet because you can see we are still playing around a bit with the back plate. And I'm gonna do the same for each single bracket. Okay. Once you fit the back plate, you need to properly do, properly screw in the bolts. We did put the bolt in, now they are in place. We need to screw them in properly. There is a little tool coming with them the specific fan, it's usually always there. So we need a screwdriver. Screw it all the way to the end. Now the back plate is in, as you can see it doesn't go anywhere, it's fixed. So we can turn the motherboard the other way around. This way we created the riser where the cooler is going to sit. 
Now, very, 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 very important step, the thermal paste. Usually aftermarket cooler come with a thermal paste. Make sure, it usually says on the box, if it doesn't come with thermal paste, you will have to buy a separate thermal paste. Very, very rare cases may come with the thermal paste pre-applied. This wasn't the case. So we have this thermal paste. I would suggest just to put a very tiny bit in the middle, like this. Don't use it all, there is no need. If you want to spread it around a bit or use a very, very tiny bit at the corners, but very little. As you can see, I did use way less than half of what's inside. Step two, let's fit the cooler on the motherboard. As you can see, this cooler is very big and it's still missing the fan. So let's say we apply, we install the cooler this way. We won't be able to install the fan this way because it's going to cover the RAM slots and you don't want this to happen. So either you can install the, the fan this way, which is probably going to work. I would suggest to check where the fan in your case are. Let's say your case blows air from this side. I would install the fan this way. So the air coming in is going to be pumped in, in this fan, which is going to be pumped on the radiator and you're going to obtain the best uh, cooling ever. Let's say your case has some outtake fan at the top. I would install the fan this way with the fan this way. So the air will be all blowed outside the case, the hot air. This is a good way to do it because the hot air tends to go up. up. So let's say uh, your case has an outtake and exhaust on the top, all the hot air will go out and fresh air will be pumped on the radiator. The only way we can basically install the cooler is this way, because if we turn the cooler this way, it's even worse because the metal bit will cover again the RAM slots. So let's go for this solution. We just gently put the cooler on top, and then we grab this bit. So these are similar to the clip I show you before on the stock cooler. It's just that instead, instead of pushing them in, you will need to screw them in. Let's make this pass in the middle here. Match the holes and let's screw it all the way to the bottom. Okay, once you have screwed all the screws till the very end, just put the cooler straight in place. And in this specific cooler, there is also a little thing to twist here to fix the cooler. Yeah, it, it, it has a bit of play. That's absolutely normal. Don't worry about it. And uh, now it's time to install the cooler itself. We said before that we cannot install the cooler this side because it's going to cover the uh, RAM slots. So we're just going to install it this side. As you can see, there are clips, so it's very easy. Nothing can go wrong. And voila, easy. in. And now, same as we've done before, we need to give power to the fan by plugging the power cable to the motherboard. Same as the stock cooler we showed you before. In this case we can make, we have a bit more play, we can make the cable go through, we can make the cable go through here, through here, and do whatever we think is best and plug it in the CPU fan. One characteristic of this cooler is, as I showed you before, that you can remove the fan. This is very convenient also if you want to clean your system. You don't need to unmount the whole cooler. You just take this, air spray it or brush it, and you can clean it nicely, clean it here a bit, and it's going to work like new. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like for us as it helps us out greatly. And share your comments in the comment section down below. Let us know what exactly you think of this. We'll see you next time for the final cooler for the Intel series, which is, of course, the Corsair all-in-one liquid cooler, although pretty much all liquid coolers are installed the same. So whatever liquid cooler you have that's all-in-one, you'll be able to follow the guide. See you next time. So yeah, um, I made this, this nice studio, as you can see. It's nice, it's good, it's cool. And um, 
it's been wrecked in like a day of filming, like completely. There's all the stuff on my bench over there that I used to do the uh, filming for other stuff. There's a motherboard here, which I have no idea how to take apart. We have knives and fans and everything going all over the place. So yeah, kind of annoying. 